Morning, 13th of July, Monday morning. Dreary and miserable outside today. Windy, cloudy, but there you go. Happy summer. Um, hope you like the video. If you like it, please subscribe, that would be great. Uh, quick shout out to one of my subscribers, young Bobby who used to live right next door to us. Uh, your dad sent me a picture of you standing with your thumbs up watching the video with my channel in the background. So hope hope you're looking after your dad and thanks for watching pal. See you later. So, Monday morning. I'd love to say it was sunny Monday and everything was going great, but it's just no. Um, couple of things. I can do an update here. Um, some days are diamonds and some just aren't. Uh, Paul, this weekend, it's his son's birthday, so happy birthday, Polly. He... Uh, Went home to Vegas, parked his truck on Friday night, Friday afternoon, dropped his trailer off to get some work done to it. And his truck in Idol Falls and jumped in his pickup and headed to Vegas for the weekend. So he's going to pick up Polly and the joys of trucking can take him to some fantastic places across the country for his birthday in the Florida region. I don't know if I'm allowed to say anything about what he's doing, but there you go. If you, if you know what's in Florida, you can figure it out. Um, so his truck's still good, trailer's all right, um, Brett is unloading today, this morning in Florida, in two drops, and what a weekend that man has had, and the way down there, I got a phone call from him on Saturday morning, and this is the kind of stuff that you put up with when you're operating trucks, phone call, hey, I've blown a tyre um, and it's quite low and the truck's low to the ground and all that stuff so, right. so he took pictures sent them to me upon looking at the pictures realised that there's two tyres you know, the inside one's sitting like that but um, it's on the tractor unit and when a tyre blows it does some serious damage up around the uh, the bottom of the chassis and the reefer so i'll put some pictures on here um i won't or tommy will put them on and uh because i haven't a clue how to do that um but hopefully you can see where the tire's blown and the outside is shredded to bits the one inside is just blown probably because of the weight and the damage that the first one did to the framework of the reefer um but that's the kind of thing you face with when doesn't matter whether you're a thousand miles away, two thousand miles, or like right now I'm five. So you still can't do anything with it. You're relying on pictures. You having to figure out where to go. So uh, they cut bits of the frame away, secure the wires, two new tires, sixteen hundred and something dollars gone, just like that. Um, Having said that, I've had it worse than that, where I was going through many years ago, I made the fatal mistake, it wasn't fatal, but I made the horrific mistake of taking two trucks that had super singles on them. My goodness. Uh, I'm sure those super singles were invented by tyre companies to make an amount of money that is obscene. So, if you have a blowout in a super single, oh my. Um, if you've got aluminum wheels, I'll get back to what the other trucks are doing. I'll just take a slight detour off here with the super single tires. Uh, I was driving along, must have been 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, coming through Cincinnati, uh, no, Cleveland. Just got to the west side of Cleveland and bang, the tire, the front drive tire on my side bust blew out as it happens from time to time 
but it blew out and as soon as it blows out it falls to the ground the rim you're doing 65 mile an hour bang it explodes and the rim hits the deck instantly um and i looked in my mirror and i could just see sparks a big a big trail of sparks coming off this rim and by the time i get that thing to the side of the road the rim's shot gone so there you are on i-90 late at night nothing around you if that was a regular tire i would have driven it slowly wasn't heavy i've driven it slowly to the nearest loves or ta tire fitted oh if they to do an hour's labor on it to you know to deal with other damage that sometimes happens that would be all right it would maybe cost me 500 600 bucks out the door great but this thing because it was one wheel on that axle if I was doing it again, I would take a chain and a bottle jack so that I could jack it up and hook it up and hold that off the ground, you know. But uh, at the time, middle of the night, didn't have a bottle jack, didn't have a chain to hold the axle, chain the axle up. Um, I would suggest that if you have got super singles, take a bottle jack and a chain with you so that you can lift that thing off the ground and get somewhere to get things repaired. But as it was, the because of the size of that tyre, the, the width of it and the bulkiness of it, when it blew and came apart, it wrapped itself all around the axle, all around the brake chamber, hoses, you know, it was all entangled in there. So, quick phone call to loves. Short, long story short, they come out, sent a kid out there that was very slight built, didn't know what he was doing, and I had to end up taking his equipment and cutting that tire off to get it out so that I can get going. The new rim, the new tyre, the call-out charge, the mileage charge, all that stuff was two and a half thousand bucks. Super singles, there's no amount of money you could save in fuel that can justify the inconvenience of when one blows on you. And they will, you know. Um, that's what happens. Um, you know, if you, get, if you get one underflated tyre on the same hub and there's dual tyres on it, one of them will pop, but another one will still get you there, you know. So you get half the damage and less the way less than half the repair costs. Oh, it's not very caught the day. But anyway, um, Wes, we got him unloaded in Oregon from a load of frozen bread that he picked up in Pennsylvania. He had four drops in that. One in one in uh, Colorado, two in Utah, and one up in. Oregon. We got that done and he got unloaded there. We loaded them with some trees, floor loaded nursery trees, paid paid freaking four bucks a mile to run over the hill into Boise. Uh, dropped that off and then we just bounced them just put over the border into Washington to pick up a load of sliced apples going down to Cheyenne, Wyoming and then Atlanta. And that pays six and a half grand, so quite quite pleased with that. Um, it's just these Walmart loads, I just hate doing them because they take so long. They, 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 they just have spaces, you know, they'll give you, they make it super legal. So is it, you know, you, it just takes forever to do the load. So that's going to take from Saturday lunchtime till Friday morning. He gets his last drop taken off, you know. So yeah, it's all right for a week's revenue, but then you're at the wrong side coming another way. But I've... I've got them to hurry up to this first drop, get there early, get unloaded, you know, and just do a yard move and then come back out the premises and t finish his reset. So you can do a reset in the middle of those to give you so much time. Um, that's Wes, Brett, Paul. Uh, Ryan's in the oil field working away. That's still going. It's good days and bad days. Little white truck putting around down there. Um, I've had 20 of those things down there. Um, I wouldn't have as much work to do, deal with them. Maybe that's down to the man that's running it. He's quite self-reliant, does his thing. Never on the phone much, you know, does good, the young man. Um, I might go back to Texas myself, no sure. Kicking it around my head, see what's the best place to go with uh, anything when I get back. Um, and that leaves us with Clay. I should get my 
my violent out or my, my s sympathetic music for this, but um, the, you know, I'll tell you, I've been very fortunate to know Jeff and know what he's capable of doing mechanically. And I've also taken vehicles to people who have not known what they were doing and made a complete mess of them, as in the case with the, the Blue Peterbilt that went to TA and they blew up the engine with an oil change. But old Clay, when he was in the oil field, he's, uh, he'll, he'll not mind me telling this, I don't think, but he's, his, uh, his, his yellow big canary, the, the big yellow truck, um, it was using a bit of water and he had somebody rebuild the engine for him and they did such a bad job on it. Um, but if a guy had deeper pockets, I would criminally prosecute them. It's, uh, it's fraud, it's deceit, incompetence. Uh, he put his trust in these people. He's bought the, the parts and paid them, give them money to, you know, get the thing put right. And it did 6,000 miles before he worked, come to work for us. And when it got to Jeff's, um, it was missing. It was running terribly and uh, leaking oil everywhere. So Jeff got in about it and put it right in the top end. So if you're not mechanically inclined, this might be difficult for you, but in the top end, the cam followers were all pitted. That had been adjusted incorrectly, or not adjusted at all, I don't think. Um, and somehow the thing managed to run. Uh, well, they put it back in the exact, everything back. I don't know how they did it. Or what, I don't even know if they did anything to it. Um, but Jeff spent a lot of time on it. There was, this came to light because when we were changing the oil for, for clay up in Idaho there, uh, a little piece of, <laughs> a little piece of a follower came out and dropped out through, dropped out through the oil pan, the, the drain plug. So luckily we spotted that and got the top end of that motor, um, got the valves adjusted on it, got new, went and got some new followers, put them on there, did all that, and it was running fine for them. But we only you know, adjusted the top half of the engine and it's supposed to have had an engine kit fitted to it. Anyway, his oil pressure has been going down lower and lower and lower and changed the, the stuff that you would think to change, you know, switches and sensors and whatnot. Put a manual gauge on it to make sure the oil pressure wasn't the gauge, wasn't the sensor. So I went to change the oil again and the oil wouldn't hardly come out. I had to stick a welding rod up through the drain plug to bring the metal filings that were magnetically attached to it. So, so I took the oil pan off of it and took the the bearings down, you know, off of the off the crank and the, the rods. And uh, I've got some pictures here I might be able to put on, but. Um, Jerry, our mechanic that we use in Texas, he was doing this and took it apart and then started taking it all down and see if he could just put new bearings in it because one of the bearings had had been getting filings in it coming off of it. But unfortunately, it spun the bearing and has ruined the block. So there you go. Um, did they do anything to the, the motor? Those Jerry was talking to Clay and was telling him, hey, those bearings are not new bearings. There's no way that they're new. Um, so he called up the, the, the guy to, to warranty the job that he did badly. Um, and he said, no, no, I can't, I, I can't, because Jeff adjusted the valves in Idaho, this guy said, no, no, you've had somebody else working the truck. I can't warranty it. Well, there was no way to run the truck um, without having somebody, it's the nature of truck in America. It's across a big country and uh, you just got to get it repaired and Jeff's is, Jeff's is the best there is. Anyhow, after discovering that the bearings hadn't changed, the guy showed up at Jerry's shop, the guy who rebuilt it showed up at Jerry's shop and said, hey, and Jerry 
is in that lovely big old Texas boy and he don't pull any punches, you know, I like that, straight to the point. And he says, there is no freaking blah blah way that you change these bearings and then eventually it comes out that no, he gets somebody else to do the job and he skimmed off the job. So, absolutely diabolical thing. Now that man sitting there has to go buy another, he's going to buy an engine this time and get it fitted this week, so. But it's the downtime. That truck still has to be paid, the trailer has to be paid. The man's sitting there doing nothing. His wife's coming out to go run over the road with him because somebody has tried to... Uh, it was a, 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 somebody from La Mesa area who is a, a, a Mennonite gentleman. I forgot the name, he did tell me. I'm not going to mention the names in case there's anything comes out of this, but I took pictures of the damage and videos up in Idaho. We've got pictures of the damage down there in Texas and the truck it hasn't done 20,000 miles and it's just been disastrously badly put back together in order to get the so the putting the rocker cover the valve cover got back on you know and they put the gasket on and it's tight to go in the corners you know they put it on and it's a bit fiddly so what they did in order to get this to fit is cut the freaking gasket right and put a big bit of silicone in there and put it on. Always going to leak. It's not. A, it's not a tiny vehicle. It's a truck. A lot of pressure, oil. Poor mechanic. In. So, um, all, best of luck to you, Clay. I hope you get this uh, sorted out. And anything we can do to help you, be great to do that. I'm glad to have you back as soon as you're on the road again. So, that is the update, and it is absolutely tipping it down here now. Let me spin this round. Oh, look at that! Gorgeous. <laughs> Let me see if we can turn the thing on. This is the same beach. Well, just along the coast a little bit. Look at that. Where does the sea start and where does the sky stop? Where does the sky, huh? Where does the sky start and the sea stop? Anyway, sunny Scotland. Hope you like the video. Talk to you later. Bye bye.